Let me take a moment and talk about Riverside.fm. It allows you to record studio quality audio and up to 4K video. When you need to record audio and video, Riverside.fm can do it. So if you're looking for a hero platform for all your recording needs, from podcasts to webinars to any video content, Riverside.fm. I've got a promo code for you where you'll receive a 30% discount on the first three months of your subscription. I'll give it to you twice. The promo code is ship it. All one word, ship it, and you'll pick up a 30% discount on your first three months of your subscription. Riverside.fm. In this episode of the Football History Headlines, we discuss three different Super Bowls that had some great stories attached to them, as well as many more Hall of Fame legendary birthdays, such as you know one of the greatest ends ever, Don Hudson, and more, and some great stories too, all coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com, your portal to positive football history. Welcome once again to the Pigpen, the place where we do all the activity of making this podcast and the Sports Jersey Dispatch podcast. And uh, we're glad to have you here once again because we're talking about football every single day of the year. Yeah, we are. Right here at pigskindispatch.com. And we try to do it by a variety of different ways. And, you know, today we have uh, some great things coming out. Uh, we're talking about early pro football teams on another uh, episode of this, this podcast and a special bonus edition. And on here, we're going to talk about the history of the day, the anniversaries of some great gridiron events. And uh, let's we'll stay tuned for that right now. Now let's get to your football history headlines. January 31st, 1982, the NFL Pro Bowl was played at Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. The final score had the AFC squad defeating their counterparts of the NFC by the score of 16-13. to There were co-MVPs in this game as Kellen Winslow Sr., a tight end from San Diego Chargers, shared the honor with Leroy Selman, the standout defensive end of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. January 31st, 1988 at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. Super Bowl XXII was not a very close one when the Denver Broncos faced the Washington Redskins. The Broncos jumped out quickly to a 10-0 lead after Ricky Nattel caught a John Elway pass for 56 yards and a score. But the powerful Washington team rattled off 42 unanswered points as quarterback Doug Williams caught fire and threw for 340 yards and four TDs to help the Washington Redskins cruise to a 42-10 victory. The MVP was Doug Williams per the Pro Football Reference website. January 31st, 1993 at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Super Bowl XXVII had some special historic moments. The Buffalo Bills became the second team since the early 1970s Dolphins to play in three straight Super Bowls. It's interesting that this would be the third different NFC team that the Bills would meet in this run of Super Bowls for them. The Cowboys were just four seasons removed from having a league-worst 1-15 record, and now they had climbed to the highest mountain in the NFL. Super Bowl XXVII was shaped up to be an interesting one indeed, but one team had come in just a little bit more prepared than the other. According to the American Football Fandom site, Dallas forced a Super Bowl record nine turnovers, four interceptions, and five lost fumbles, and scored 35 points off those Bills miscues. The Dallas Cowboys won in a landslide 52-17 over the Bills. Troy Aikman, the quarterback of the Cowboys, won the most valuable player honors as he tossed four touchdown passes and racked up 273 yards through the air. Another interesting note is that a 30-second commercial spot costs $850,000. Remember that total because we're going to talk about that a little bit more in another Super Bowl. As a matter of fact, let's talk about that Super Bowl. January 31st, 1999 at Pro Player Stadium in Miami, Florida. 
Super Bowl 33 featured the Dirty Birds of the Atlanta Falcons facing the AFC champs, the Denver Broncos. Denver was the defending champs, as a year earlier they had defeated Green Bay for the franchise's first championship per the PFR. Quarterback John Elway was getting a little long in a tooth, but his mastery of the offense was never in doubt. The Falcons were appearing in their first Super Bowl, led by quarterback Chris Chandler and running back Jamal Anderson. The Broncos were a little bit too much for the upstart Atlanta Falcons, though, as they grounded the Falcons 34-19. Elway, who threw for 336 yards and a touchdown, took home the MVP trophy and traveled to Disney. A 30-second commercial during this Super Bowl would set you back a cool $1.6 million. January 31st, 2010, Sun Life Stadium in Miami Gardens. The NFL Pro Bowl had a game where the AFC was one-upping the NFC 41-34. The MVP of the game was Matt Schaub of the Houston Tech Signal Caller. January 31st, 2016, Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. The NFL Pro Bowl team of Team Irvin defeated Team Rice 49-27. Of course, we're talking about Michael Irvin and Jerry Rice, who were the, the captains that picked the teams. As the NFL was still in a series of games where the two legends would divide the Pro Bowlers up instead of playing conference versus conference matchups. The dual most valuable players were Seattle Seahawks, both of them, quarterback Russell Wilson and defensive end Michael Bennett. As we take a quick break from the headlines, let me remind you that you can also learn more about the Gridiron History on our website, pigskindispatch.com. And you can contact me, Darren Hayes, at pigskindispatch at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Speaking of hearing from someone, here is one of my podcasting partners from the sportshistorynetwork.com that has a message for you. Do you wish you knew more about the 100 seasons of the NFL? You're in luck because you found the Football History Dude Podcast, where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. From the founding of the league in an auto showroom, all the way to what it is today, America's favorite sport and a behemoth of an industry. My name is Ernie Chapman. Football is my passion, and I want you to come along with me each week to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board, my DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. Now that's some good stuff there. And some other good stuff is on this podcast. Tomorrow, we are going to be talking with Craig Woodard Sr. from Tampa during the Super Bowl week. And he's got a special event happening down there that I think you'll want to hear about where it's going to concern some NFL veterans and it's going to be helping some people down there. And we want to make sure you check that out. And Craig's going to tell us all about it tomorrow in our interview with him. And let's go to our birthdays of Hall of Famers now. January 31st, 1909, in Hinsdale, Illinois, Bert Metzger, the guard from Notre Dame, was born. The Irish teams of 1929 and 1930 win a combined record of 19-0, and Bert Metzger, according to the NFF, was the leading interference with aggressive skill and determination for Notre Dame as they racked up 410 points to the opponent's 112 in those two seasons. Bert was a big part of the blocking tacklers away from the Irish ball carriers. The National Football Foundation voters selected Burt Metzger to gain entrance into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1982. Our next end of January birthday happened in 1913, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. The fine Alabama end, Don Hudson celebrated his birth. The footballfoundation.org website tells how what a great route running, elusive speed and spurts Don Hudson had has set the standards for past receivers to come. Hudson once hauled in six passes for 165 yards and two touchdowns in Alabama's 29-13 victory over Stanford in the Rose Bowl. Don was an All-American selection in 1934, and that season was brilliant by Hudson as he played the signature games, such as when he scored the winning touchdown on a nine-yard run end around against Tennessee in a 13-6 tied victory. The Clemson game that year, he caught six passes and scored two touchdowns. The National Football Foundation placed Don Hudson into the inaugural College Football Hall of Fame class in 1951, as we just discussed that just a few days ago on the Football History Headlines. After leaving Alabama, Hudson played 11 seasons with the Green Bay Packers. He was an All-Pro nine times, even leading the league in pass receptions eight different times as he led the league in scoring five times. Once his crowning accomplishment was to be named the NFL's most valuable player 
twice. He finished his pro career with 7,991 yards and 488 pass receptions. Don Hudson had no trouble gaining entrance into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1963. January 31st, 1913, Roxbury, Massachusetts. Wayne Milner, the legendary end from the University of Notre Dame, was born. According to the National Football Foundation's bio on him, Double L. Milner was a hero in two spectacular fighting Irish wins during a dismal season otherwise in South Bend in 1933. Notre Dame had won its only two of its first eight games and was scheduled against an unbeaten Army team. When one, one minute left to play, Notre Dame trailed the cadets by six. With his legendary teammate, Moose Krause, leading the way for him, Milner blocked an Army punt and recovered it for a touchdown. Notre Dame won the game 13-12 on that last-minute heroics. Another story had Milner catching a late touchdown pass from quarterback Bill Shakespeare with 32 seconds left to lift the Irish to an 18-13 victory over Ohio State in a battle of unbeatens. He ended up having the honor of All-American status in two different seasons. The National Football Foundation selected Wayne Milner in 1990 to enter into their College Football Hall of Fame. After college, Milner joined the Boston Redskins and played 11 seasons for them, being interrupted briefly for his military service during the war. When he retired, he was a top pass catcher in Redskins history. Probably his highlight game in the NFL was the 1937's championship game where he caught a touchdown passes of 55 and 78 yards. The Pro Football Hall of Fame enshrined Wayne Milner in 1968. January 31st, 1938, Oakland, California, the great Stanford end, Chris Burford was born. The National Football Foundation voters chose the legacy of Chris Burford to enter into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1995. Our last birthday took place on January 31st, 1953. Brenham, Texas. Roosevelt Leakes, the running back from Texas University, arrived into his life. Leakes was the first African-American Texas Longhorns player to earn All-America honors, according to the NFF. Roosevelt Leakes finished his college career with 2,923 yards and 26 touchdowns in just three seasons and was recognized as a consensus All-American in 1973. The National Football Foundation selected Roosevelt Leaks to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2006. Now, thanks again, once again, for joining us for these football history headlines. And make sure you join us tomorrow because, like we said, we're going to start some interviews and we're going to get into some great football history by talking to some others that really know the game. And uh, first one is going to be Craig Woodard Sr. and what a career he had and uh, stories he's had to tell us and what a great event uh, this young man has coming up uh, the day before the Super Bowl down at Tampa. So make sure you check that out and you can do that by hitting the subscribe button you'll know as soon as we release it you can join us then or you can go to a couple different places your favorite podcast provider you can go to the pigskindispatch.com or email us at pigskindispatch at gmail.com get on our email list and uh which sportshistorynetwork.com is another place you can find this podcast and some other excellent podcasts on sports histories. We're adding more all the time. I think we're up to like 16 or 17 uh, different podcasts right now. It's just growing like wildfire. And folks, you've got to check this out because there is some great talented podcasters on there that uh, I really look up to and really enjoy listening to. And I think you will too. So make sure you check that out, sportshistorynetwork.com. Peeking up at the clock, the time's running down. We're going to go into victory formation, take a knee, and let this baby run out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for the next podcast. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. It was just another ordinary day in the offices of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, 
everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. Isn't it just? A poster-sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website, where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. (laughs) Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so it was that Marla Delft discovered the spondiferous magic of Row 1 sports memorabilia arts and prints. You can, too, by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row1. That's R-O-W number one today for access to the full Row 1 catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act A for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at checkout. And keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer. Coming soon. Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? you should check out Row 1 Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, Check out the 1963 Vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row1 and save 15% off your order.